again. This video is created to walk you through to the outcome part of your research project. I want you to remember that whatever we say here can be found in to our 2013 research project under the topic research findings presentation research outcome and we are getting into this first which is the current view by the end of this video whatever i will walk through with you it will be added here as a book titled all you need to know about research project this information here it is from all your other teachers some it is as early as 2010 2011 however i hesitated to take it away because some of you have worked based on this and some of you are familiar to work better with your teacher i'm going to present whatever is in here and I'm going to give you the new um, 2013 guidance. Let's start. I will need to start from this. As you see in here, it is from the DEX curriculum services, fresh as possible. And it tells us what we need to do and how we're going to be assessed in the research outcome which is the assessment type 2 still school based forget all this i want to talk about this red thing at the point these points planning the criteria p1 and p2 application a1, A2, A3 have already been discussed in the folio. So if we are going to uh, say anything, we need to make this comment that this here, I um, need entering the comment here this has uh, been discussed in the folio and it is not assessed here all of this okay the development and use of topic specific knowledge and skills is part of the past okay not not to be assessed in the outcome what are they going to assess this part this part which is called synthesis so they're going to assess you on the production what you have produced they're going to assess you on the substantiation of the key findings and that's very important and they're going to assess you on the expression of ideas so the quality of the production is very important what you will produce We'll discuss it later. This is what you can produce. Okay? So you can write anything, an artifact. You can make, sorry, I need to write it. You can make actually something, a sculpture. You can visually show the evidence. You can uh, make a video 
uh, you can find a solution in a problem you're discussing all this time. Or you can tell us also that you need further research. You can make a PowerPoint, whatever you want. So you have to create a research outcome that brings together all these things that you have developed here. In our school, we usually work with essays. The most important thing that will give you the A is that you have to identify or demonstrate the knowledge, skills and ideas which are related to your research outcomes and that they are supported by evidence and examples from your research. So, whatever you have found from your readings, from your surveys, from your interviews, and you're using it as referencing to your statements, this becomes the substantiation of your research project. And of course, you need to express the ideas correct. And as your wonderful users of the English language, I have no doubt that you will be successful in this. I want you to remember that at this stage, we do not care at all for evaluation. Why? Because that will be part three. So, this is what I want you to remember, and let's go further down. It's the same paper, the same page, sort of the next page of the same paper. So what they advise us to have in our research outcome. This is your guidance and it will be in your portfolio as RP support research outcome. It's already there. I will put it also in the uh, book file I'm going to create and that will be the first document. It will be blank so you can have it as guidance although we'll put other scaffolds there too. So actually, it's asking you to summarize the process as part of your introduction. Some teachers give you introduction and board structure. I don't disagree. This is what says supports. Just offering you ideas, you will decide what suits you better. So you will have to summarize the processes and you have to complete this before you present your findings. That's why it has to be in the introduction. So you have to tell us what did you want to find out and refer to your focus question. Was this your original aim or not? And if it has been modified or not, it's very important to show us the journey. And we want also to tell us what did you find out? And it's a good idea to have some dot points. You have to tell us, is your research completed? If you didn't reach a conclusion, what are the things you should continue doing to finish off? They are aware that our time is limited. They are aware that I did my best, I had many challenges, in this limited time I've done this, but I need more research to take it further. And this is legitimate and this is part of the whole research. We know that we have limitations and we are just humans who can deal with specific challenges. We are not superhumans. So it's okay to explain to us that you may have not reached the conclusion. You may need to take it further, have more research into this. Now, You have to negotiate and make your research as part of this. Who would you like to present your findings to? So you have to write a outcome that it is purposeful. 
if you have conducted, if you have conducted an experiment, I know one of our students who has done experiment, chemical experiment, you need to write your outcome as a report, not just a result. It has to be compatible with your skills development. If you have uh, researched how to uh, make a skateboard and you decided that you will show us how to do the skateboard, you have to show us the skateboard. If you have decided Sorry about this. If you have decided that you need to go further and uh, research how you can learn to be a dancer and you decide that you give us a video of your uh, dancing performances, we need to be able to understand that. We need to know the format. And this is compatible with what medium would you like to use presenting? Letter. PowerPoint, a web page, a video, an oral presentation, an essay, a prezi. Later, I'm going to show you examples of different kind of merit folios. There is a merit folio, the one we have on the board, on the walls, and now we're going to see, we have there the folio merit. Now we're going to put the outcome, which has also merit. And it is just a PowerPoint. Also, we can have essays, which are merits. So we need to know what we're discussing. So when you make this decision, keep in mind that if your outcome is presented in written form, it has to be 1,500 words, if in written form, but if you decide to make a PowerPoint or a Prezi, uh, then uh, it has not to be more than 10 minutes. Okay? If it is multimodal, you have to have five minutes and some 750 words. And you have to tell us when and where you're going to present your findings. So the kind of findings will vary according to the context and the presentation Whatever the format of the medium is used, your teacher will assess your findings and give you a feedback, and then you may be able to fix it again. And this is the achievement feedback sheet that we really need to complete. The learn requirements is to show us that you generate ideas to plan and develop a research project, consider the relevance to the chosen capability, analyze the information and evaluate. Okay, so this is what we are going really to use. Uh, based on this, I'm going to open the other document, which is the one we have used in the past, I have used in the past, and really complies. This is what we used last year. So you have to decide on the format, decide on the audience, other students, community members, the reader, if you write an essay and that's your case, uh, describe your findings and present your findings in the format of outcome. So your format is, as we said, a conclusion recommendation. And as uh, explained before, this is equates to these words, if it's an essay, maximum of 10 minutes of oral presentation only or if you choose multimodal form it is part and part the artifact and 750 words a display and pictures of the display and 750 words a multimedia presentation a powerpoint or press and 700 words or combination of all of the above so you can have an artifact and PowerPoint and some words. And let's go and say what we want. What did you want to find? Was this your original aim? What did you find out? It's exactly what is in here. So you can use either this or this, which is 
titled 01 outcome. This is your guidance and you can really um, use it in this form. This is a scaffold I have created and that's your introductory paragraph which will have to include your question, your aim, if you really work it, any changes, what's your audience, what's your product, and then you have to give us your findings. A new paragraph, what is your finding number one? What source of information you used? Give relevant examples and show us what you actually learned into this and any ideas or insights while you're doing this. The second paragraph is repeating the same. The third paragraph, but every finding has to be different. And you can go five, four, six paragraphs, as many findings as you have identified. And this is your conclusion, where you have to discuss, have you completed your research? What further research you required? What further questions have arisen, arose? Which other questions arise? What other questions you need to investigate from your research findings? So some kind of evaluation, not in depth, insights that you really need to take it further. And how will this change, this change, will affect the outcome. I wanted to find this, I couldn't, I need further research to keep it to the perfect point. You, can you predict anything? Can you predict, let's say, what will be the future? What will be the impact of what you have done to the others? I have an example of a person who has learned how to make comics and well, he started to, um, finding as a hobby in the course he discovered that he can follow up as a career he was so thrilled so uh, this is the change that will may affect his outcome the change is that this really will have an impact on his future career and he predicts for example that he can be a perfect comic writer and of course, conclusions, recommendations, solutions, and uh, any issues, I will write it here, any issues with the created product, if you have any. And of course, bibliography or references. And I want you to remember that whatever is included here, it has to be existing before. In the States and Europe, they give you marks according to how many readings are here and not entered here. How many readings are here and not cited here. So whatever you use, it has to be included in the bibliography. And this is my walkthrough. I will also um, show you this a scaffold of outcome. I don't know who has created that. It is in the folder. It says to us that we need to have a report that has to be in this um, sections or an essay that we is having the format of a continuous prose. Nevertheless, the structure is the same, like an English essay, introduction, body paragraph, and this is a different kind of format, um, but also it is the one you really need to um, include. If we are trying to change this to make it more scaffoldy, I would go and have some dot points here and um, take it like this which is really um, 
helping you to understand what you're answering and what you are um, entering into this case. And all these are guidances. And of course, that's why I'm referring to your brilliant teachers because they guide you well. You see that? It's the same thing, the same thing like the previous one I have done. Whatever is the format here, it has to be the format here and continues to the next. And the conclusions is exactly this. Um, what is missing here, and I need you to pay attention because it's referred to the sales advice. Uh, here they use it as an English text, summarize your main points, state what conclusion recommendations you have reached, but really uh, it says also uh, if you need to follow up further research, it's required to contradict with what I said earlier. Uh, this is the last conclusions, recommendations, solutions and issues, but this is the extra paragraph added based on what says is support okay and um, mainly I would say that this is a very important key how this change in your guidance in your research will impact the find because more research can change things upside down and um, I think this will conclude this part. What I would like to do, I will stop it here. What I would like to do in the next video is to put um, all the information we need to show the referencing and the substantiation and how other people have done this, other married uh, samples have done this. I'm going to put the merit folios onto the Moodle so you can scroll through and I'm going to guide through this. But before I complete, I would like to um, show you this, which is made back in 2008. It's still valid. It is the Sales Ports Guidance to System of Referencing, should we use. And it is referring to the Harvard and the Macquarie University, but really um, you can use other styles of referencing. The most important is that you have to give the code on to the author, the date, the page and the number. Um, and this is how you're going to enter it. You say, for example, this and you indent from the margins and you have it in italics, your um, quotation, and you really need to make a mistake. You really need to highlight this. Okay? This is the important thing that needs to be highlighted. Reynolds, 2000, page 20. Uh, also, if you need to quote some words, you need to learn that you have to include the words in the normal setting and then enter the page. Just use this. Okay? Please don't have it in Italian. Now, how you acknowledge another author's ideas without quoting anything? You have to say, as Ward and Food said, this is what has happened. Or as Miss Oliver said in the interview I had with her, or as Mr. Smith quoted in his email uh, comments. Now, very important how to create a reference list. It's a full list of the publications, and we have to have these basic elements. We need the creator. Whatever it is, the text details, count the edition, the page numbers, and the publication details last. And uh, I'm going to put that there. It is com 
a little bit different from what's existing at this time. At this time, what we have here, it is this, which is a photocopy, and I would like to discuss with other teachers and take it away. Um, it is very um, old kind of referencing, so uh, we would like to have something more uh, says approved. And um, this is what you really can do according to the previous one. Sometimes you have to understand that referencing from the internet, sorry, uh, is the most common. Internet is a huge library now. So you can access online books, newspapers, magazines, public documents. Still, they need to be referenced and this is what we need to do we have to say uh, that is informally published in the internet you have to incorporate as much information especially the url and the access day you have to tell me if it's unpublished private or it is a non-standard format because it is very important for us to see how things work you can find this information there and you will discuss it the reference list with your teacher later as these things go okay i want you to understand that this is very important some people have watched some videos from the website and they're referring to that in their research i have a person uh, who has done some aboriginal dance bangara dance theater and they have watched a online interview of uh, the founder of the theater and that was a very useful source they need to refer to this in this kind of way. They have access it through this link. Okay. Um, and that's it. So all the information is there. If you have a website and only an article, please use something like this. Title, date, URL. Okay, um, and all these are very important to be footnoted, so they will substantiate your findings. I'm stopping now, and this is the spot I'm going to start with the next video to connect this with the work other students have done in their married folios. Thank you for this. Please give me input what else you would like to have included in this podcast.